Hello and welcome. Uh, before I get into this video, there's a couple of things I'd like to say. And uh, coming from Molly and I, uh, thank you very much to all the subscribers on YouTube. We've hit 10,000 subscribers. So um, thanks probably mostly to Molly. So she takes most of the credit here. Steals my thunder, don't you? Eh? And also a special welcome to my new patron on Patreon. That's Hilda O'Hanley. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, support there. Now a little bit uh, different kind of video today to my normal. I've got a Benina B380 here. And if we have a look in behind Molly here, you'll see some electronics uh, tools here. Got a soldering iron and some uh, solder and uh, desoldering equipment, things like that. So yeah, this machine came in with a, uh, the customer said that the machine emitted smoke, you know, uh, came out from the bob and winder area here. And, uh, you know, a smoking sewing machine is not a good look. It's not a good habit either. Uh, so hopefully we can get to the bottom of that. I don't think it's the bob and winder. Um, it had a sort of, I plugged it in myself actually and just turned it on and yeah, a little bit more smoke came out. So I turned it off quickly and, uh, you know, I didn't want to do any more damage than had already been done. So I think the, you know, had that sort of electronic-y smell. I think it's a chip that's gone. Uh, so uh, let's get in for a close look. I'll, I'll take the machine uh, apart as far as to get to the electronic board here, inside here. And we'll take a close look, see if we can find what the uh, problem is there. Okay, let's start by getting this side panel here off. Uh, this machine also has got the, you know, this common issue with these machines with these plastic hand wheels. They break uh, the plastic hand wheels here. So I've got another one of those coming. It's on its way. I'll get that sorted. So we'll just remove this cover here, first of all. So. I'll be giving the machine a service too while I'm here. Uh, but I won't go through that in this video. This is really just to show you this repair on the electronics here. If you want to get straight to the electronics repair, you can skip forward. Uh, just I'll put chapters in down. You'll see on the, the bar down below on the YouTube, uh, the red play bar there that's split up into chapters there. So you can skip straight to it if you want to. This is the power supply. I don't think it's the power supply because this is uh, sort of independent of the rest of the electronics. And if it was the power supply, I would have expected to see smoke coming from, you know, these grills here. But I had it coming from in here, so that's kind of indicating that it's the panel. Okay, one extra long screw there for the power supply. Three screws here, these are Torx. Uh, what size is that? That's a Torx 20, size 20 that one. Four screws actually on the back. should just pull away there. Oops, that's the presser foot there. Presser foot lever just needs to lift up slightly. Feed the cable through there. And there's the rear panel. Okay, now before we go too far here with these removing the front panel screws is I'll just disconnect the cables here. There's one here on the left. There's another one and behind here, down in here, that one, this one here, that one, and another two over this side here. Those two there. And then four screws, I think it is. Let's count one there. One another one down the side here, two, uh, down the bottom here, three, 
uh, there's five, five screws. Three, another one down in here. Four. And another one over here, five. And then we should be able to get this front cover off. Now, I'm just going to take electrostatic precautions here. I've got a grounding strap here, so I don't want any you know, static electricity that's built up in my body to, you know, short out through the electronic components. So this here grounds me and discharges or dissipates any static electricity that my body might be holding there. Okay, and then I'll just pull this little uh, balancing dial off here. It just comes straight off. So we've got to slip it off the top there. Gently pull that. Now be careful when you're removing this panel because there's two connections down in here. These connections here, they need to be removed. So just pull to the right there and another one just here. Just those two. And I'll just bear in mind too that this LED lamp sort of slides in um, slides in this area here so you know you can you, sometimes you have to pull that out but this one it just slid out by itself there okay and this is the oh I can see the problem straight away <laughs> that's pretty obvious okay so this is the electronic board here the main board and can anyone spot any issues I get closer, give you a little hint. <laughs> oh, it's not looking too good, is it? There's a, there's a good one. There's the culprit there. Looking pretty nasty. So the magic smokes escaped from that. Okay, so at least that wasn't too hard to find. Hopefully the cause of that is not somewhere else. Hopefully, you know, this chip just failed. So the idea today is to remove this chip and solder in a new one. Okay, just to, to make this easier, I'm going to remove the, the board here. So just, uh, this is Torx 10, size 10. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven there. And this, this little connector here, that one just pulls straight off. So just grip it and off like that and now the board should lift out yep oh no that was the screen there and there's the front cover there now you can see here's another common problem with these uh, these posts here that hold the cover on that's where the screw comes in that's all cracked you know, that one's not too bad. I'll, I'll glue that one up. It's probably going to survive. But eventually, you know, these just disintegrate and crumble. And when you get a couple of them fail, uh, you know, there's another one down here. That one looks okay. But this one here is starting to go, you know, th these ones here fail on this end here. That's the bobbin cover there. That's your bobbin cover. That one there. That one cracks quite often as well. So when you get a few of them uh, cracked, you know, the front covers start to sort of fall off almost. And uh, it's time for a replacement and they're not overly cheap. I can tell you for this uh, front panel. Uh, it's a good idea to try and catch those before they get too bad. Try and fix them up best as possible. So here we have our board here. So the plan is to desolder this chip here and I'll do my best. Hopefully it hasn't 
damage the board. That's the only thing that'll stop this from, you know, this machine from running again will be if this uh, blown part here has damaged the board. Just a quick note on the tools that I'll be using. I've got a soldering iron here. It's got a, um, a chisel tip. I'll see if I can get that focus for you. And you can see there, it's a chisel type tip. It's probably the best for this sort of work. The other things I'll be using is a flux pen, or you know, you can just use standard old flux. It's no problem. I've also got a um, this chip quick it's called chip quick here it's a little kit just comes with a, a flux here and a very low temperature melting point uh, solder so what you can do is you can lay this solder you'll see in a sec when I do this you can melt the solder onto the the pins and uh, because normal solder will you know re-solidify very quickly and uh, we've got two rows of pins here two rows of pins you know and by the time you heat up and melt one side and then go to the other uh, and heat up and melt the other side this first side here is already solidified and you can't get the chip off and it's not a good idea to you know you'd imagine that you'd be able to melt one side lift the pins you know lift one side of the chip um, and then do the same on the other side but it, that strains these little pads too much and you know you can cause damage using that method you've got to be pretty careful with these so this low melting point uh, solder allows you to apply the solder to this side here and to this side and then just go back and forward with the iron and gradually just you know the whole idea is that both sides of the solder will be molten at one time and you know hopefully will lift these um, pads off all in one so that you know then you can just um, lift the chip away nice and easily that's the plan uh, so I've got the chip quick here I've got standard solder just for re-soldering the uh, new chip on I've got the new chip here it's quite a common uh, failure as well I think as far as I know these chips are really readily available from Benina um, I've got solder work for cleaning up for cleaning the solder if you don't know about all these uh, bits and pieces you know you'll you'll see it in a, in a minute when I use it what what these are all used for um, I've got cotton buds or uh, q-tips if you're in America q-tips or Canada do they call do they call these q-tips in Canada uh, we call them cotton buds here and probably Australia call them cotton buds I've got a, a pair of uh, tweezers there good you know electronics type tweezers with very sharp with a very sharp uh, point on them there I've got isopropyl alcohol I've got a good pair of um, side cutters there so that's pretty much really all you need to do this and a um, bit of patience steady hand <laughs> okay I've, I've got you about as close as I can get the camera without it going out of focus so you can see just in relation to my finger there the size that we're working with here it's a fairly fine pitch here now I'm on, on a, a little bit of an awkward angle hopefully um, I can keep the subject uh, in camera shot there it's a little bit of an awkward angle so what I'll be doing is I'll be just gently lifting with these tweezers here while I apply uh, the solder so the first thing to do here is we'll use some of the flux that came with the uh, chip quick here. This chip quick flux will just this helps the solder to flow. Get a little bit of that on there. It's like a sort of like a paste almost. And then just do the other side. Now it's quite grubby around here where the uh, you know the little tiny explosions happened here so hopefully that doesn't interfere with the desoldering process there I've got my iron ready to go and I'll just go ahead and get some of this chip quick solder on here Just 
want to get enough to make it sort of flow across those legs there. Now I'm not applying much pressure here so you know you don't want to be applying much pressure so you don't want to sort of bend anything or bend any of the legs or lift any of the pads things like that. Actually if I s I'll just swing this around and show you the other the other side there. down there where it's blown out and you can see that the solder's sort of having a little bit of trouble taking there so I'll just get in there with a little bit more flux to make that flow a little bit better got to be a careful of these little components beside this chip here as well I don't want to be knocking those okay yes it's sort of temp it's tending to uh, move the solder away from that corner just that I think it's just a bit dirty I'll get some of this flux on here to try and clean that up a little bit swing the board around a little bit uh, so that I can get my tweezers underneath here just to gently so I'm not actually putting much pressure on here at all I just want to see if it moves that's all I'm looking for so I'll heat up both sides here No sign of it coming yet. Oh yeah, there it goes. There we go. There we go. Dead chip. With a big hole blowing through it. Okay. So that's good now we just want to clean up this leftover solder just need to be careful of the components nearby uh, best way to do that is with solder wick or you could use a, a desoldering gun or something like that to suck that away in fact if you're doing bulk solder like that you can also use these that's a desoldering pump so it, um, it just you put the nozzle on uh, the solder and then you you know prime it and it just sucks the solder solder sucker otherwise known so we can get the majority of the solder off with this and save a little bit of um, solder work so you just melt melt the solder so I'll just work my way along here things jammed up probably doesn't like this low melting point solder yeah not that happy this pump with this low melting point solder so let's get a bit of uh, flux on there just to help that flow a little bit
clean those pads up a little bit there. Solder wick saturated there, so I'll just put a little bit more out there. Now that brown sort of sludge, you can see that's just uh, contamination from, I would say, where that chips. Blown. So I'll just work my way along there, cleaning that up. Okay, it's not looking too bad there. Next thing to do is to try and clean that up as much as possible. Get as much as this. That some of that could be a uh, flux as well. That brownie sort of colour. Just clean that up as much as we can here. might just go back over that with the solder wick as well yeah I can see the just having a look to see if there's any damage here I don't want to do anything too I don't want to scrape too hard here just sort of having a look to see whether it's damaged there might be a pad lifting there so if we're lucky, we should be okay. Got the soldering iron set to about uh, 280, 280 for the desoldering process. Uh, you don't want that to be too high because it could lift these pads. And I can see that uh, that's a little bit of a worry. As long as it doesn't detach from its connector. This little trace here coming around here I think uh, that should be okay in fact I should do a continuity test between these two points I think that's the trace comes from this pad along here to that via that little hole there and if I get the meter and test this so continuity test it will beep when there's continuity there and we'll just go from that via there to the pad there's connection there so that's good uh, I need to be pretty careful so I don't really want to go cleaning this up too much more in case you know that pad uh, detaches there I think that's good enough to you know resolder the new chip onto there what I want to do here is I might work from this corner uh, down here to just tack the uh, new chip on there so I'll just uh, tin one of these leads here just a little bit of solder on one of the leads there one of the little pads we get our brand new chip taking note of the orientation the basically the little dot you'll see a little dot on this chip here that little dot just there and there's a little dot on this one here as well just need to make sure that they are the same orientation there. I'll just drop the chip on there, hold that with the tweezer there in position and just quickly oh, try not to move it. Just quickly tack that on there. Now I just want to centralize that chip just a little bit. So I just want to push it slightly over. That's pretty central there. Doesn't have to be exact, but just close. Okay, 
So that's one corner tack there. So I'll go to the other corner, tack that on. That's got it. Yep. That's got it there. I'm just going to dab solder onto each of these pins here. First of all, I'll get some flux on there just to help this solder flow. Too much there. I've got a couple of bridged couple of bridge joints there but I'll just need to drag that out okay one bridged maybe two one bridge there, just too much solder. Uh, I'll just get my solder wick here. Still bridged. That's better. No longer bridged, but I obviously took the solder off, so I'll just put a little bit more on there. Just be a little bit too much there still. I'll have a close look at that in a second. I'll go and do this other side here. Looking pretty good there, that side. Just double check this one again. Okay, looks a little bit messy there at the moment because of the flux I think there. I'll have a very good close look at that with my magnifying headset and see whether, you know, just to double check there's no bridges there, solder bridges, and that the connections, all the connections are made there. Okay, let's clean up this area here. Try and get as much of the flux off as possible. This area down here is going to be quite hard to clean up. You know, that's a little bit of scorching there from when the chip blew. But I've had a close look under the magnifier and uh, there's no bridges. And, you know, the joints, they're, they seem okay. You know, they're, they're definitely soldered. Soldering job's okay. Uh, probably could have done a better job if I uh, could, you know, just uh, freely move the board around. But uh, just trying to keep it in in shot and in focus for you. That's my excuse anyway. Looking pretty good there. So now it's just a matter of putting the board back into the front cover and assembling the machine. I won't show you that process. It's basically just the reverse of what you saw when I took the machine apart. So um, I'll be right back and hopefully we've got a working machine. Okay, the moment of truth. I've uh, assembled the machine, plugged it in. It's all set to turn on there. Uh, so fingers crossed uh, that we don't see any smoke emitting from up here. Uh, if it does emit smoke again, uh, you know, I guess it could possibly have blown the same chip and there might be a problem uh, further down the line that's causing that chip to blow. But um, yeah, hopefully everything's uh, set to go. So let's see how we go. I haven't turned it on yet. This is first time. So hopefully it doesn't go bang or anything like that. Here we go. Okay, promising. We've got 
lights coming on here. No smoke, no bangs as yet. Uh, let's let's put some power on. Ooh. Okay. So let's just get a piece of scrap material. Now I haven't threaded it up at this stage. I just want to see, you know, if things are doing what they should. So we've got straight stitch there, reverse. reversing there. Uh, let's try zigzag. Uh, no zigzag. Is that right? Yeah, we don't have any zigzag. I think that chip is a driver chip for the zigzag mechanism and um, yeah it looks to me as though it's not it's not it's not functioning stitch length and reverse is working okay here is making no difference at all okay so yeah it, it looks like we're still got an issue here that may have been caused by the chip blowing it might have taken something else out further down the line or something might have taken out uh, the chip and you know is causing other issues here as well uh, so at this stage I think uh, it's probably an idea to you know look at swapping the board out I'm not sure how much that's going to cost I'm more than likely it's going to cost quite a bit uh, but yeah I think that's the the next option here you know without delving too far down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out what component on the board is faulty from here on in so yeah not quite not quite uh, the result I was after but um, you know at least you got to see what uh, what's involved in and replacing a, a chip like this here that's blowing so you know there's uh, there's the culprit there the close-up there the bad chip so whether you know that took something else out or I don't know but um, I'll, I'll leave it at that at this stage so yeah I mean I got to the point where the machine works without uh, emitting smoke that's one thing but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's no good with uh, no zigzag there. So further investigation required on that one, I think. Uh, but yeah, I'll leave it at this stage. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, as always, thank you very much to my patrons. If you'd like to help support the channel, uh, please take a look at patreon.com forward slash sewing machines.